Good evening. Welcome to Cafe Politique. My name is Robert Ermel and I'm the Director of Operations for the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. To find out more about our institute and what we do, I invite you to take a look at the handbills that you found on your chair tonight, or to visit our website at mipr.ca. Tonight we're discussing energy in Manitoba. How does Manitoba fit into the global energy framework? Who do we sell our energy to? What does future development mean for Manitoba and the affected communities? How does the globalized environment affect energy economics, production, and delivery to users? What's in store for the future, given current economic and social trends? These are just some of the topics that our panel will be discussing this evening. Our panel this evening is Dr. George Churchman, Dr. Jeffrey Kotis, Dr. Peter Kolcheski, and Mr. Phil Gass. Your detailed bios can be found in your welcome papers. Following the presentations, we'll open the floor to questions. Please just raise your hand and we'll bring the mic out up to you. And before you leave this evening, I invite you to fill up your feedback form. Many of our events come from your ideas. I'll now uh, turn it over to George to start off the evening. Enjoy. Good evening. Um, my name is George Treachman, and um, I guess I have a very short talk. Um, I'm not sure how long it is. Might be up to 10 minutes, depends on how many tangents I go off on, which are, us economists are pretty good at. And um, so anyway, um, uh, don't, please don't be distracted or put to sleep too much by that long list that is up on the screen. Oh, I guess I should put it up on the screen. <laughs> okay. But, um, um, Basically, uh, it talks about global energy problems and issues, and um, uh, or at least it lists a whole bunch of them. Uh, and um, uh, but uh, global energy problems and issues are also Manitoba energy problems and issues. Uh, they may have be slightly different in scope and. Uh, and importance and urgency and so on, but fundamentally, uh, you know, we are um, 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 talk, going to be talking about also using that slide of Manitoba problems, energy problems and issues in a time I might, times I might allude to some of them. Um, the, um, I'm able to cover most of these global and Manitoba problems and energy issues just by uh, exploring the first two on that list, because that will probably exhaust most of my time, a lot of time on this. Uh, and besides, uh, so those first two are energy use and climate change, and the second one is uh, fossil fuel dependence, and um, just to be sure that it's still there. <laughs> uh, so um, I think um, uh, I'll kind of proceed in that way, and then I may end up uh, focusing a little bit on the very last issue. But in the course of this, I hope I'll be touching on most of the other ones as well. Otherwise, they can come up in questions later on as they arise. So first, let's look uh, quickly at um, energy use and climate change. Sometimes uh, climate change is called global warming, or it has been called uh, that, but uh, I guess because who cares on average one or two degrees of global average annual temperature increase, right? Uh, it's only one or two degrees, uh, so I think uh, it, at some point that, that uh, common label has changed to uh, climate change, which uh, kind of sounds a little more ominous and a little bit more like something to be concerned about. Uh, so um, uh, we, of course, have experienced potentially, possibly, hypothetically, uh, some of these uh, rural Manitoba uh, uh, in recent times. So. Rural Manitoba was flooded several spring times, and um, Winnipeg was saved by Duff Droblin's ditch. 
So um, we um, experience probably a lot less of this kind of of the problems and uh, to say inconveniences would be an understatement of some of these things. But anyway, um, uh, so anyway, we know this uh, when, of course, the Arctic has been melting, and the ice caps in the PC mountains have been melting, and um, uh, Calgary gets flooded, and, um, and so on. So. Um, so energy use and climate change uh, is an interesting topic because it's, uh, it seems like maybe some of this climate change is happening, but not quite in the way we thought of it. We thought maybe we would, uh, you know, uh, face um, more of other kinds of irritations and inconveniences and so on. Uh, next, uh, fossil fuel dependence globally over, and that's my second point there, is that over 80% of energy use has been carbon burning fuels in the transportation, in industry, uh, commercial and retail sectors, and in residential use. Um, Manitoba's picture kind of fits that pattern um, pretty well, the broad North American pattern, and particularly exacerbated by our somewhat more northern uh, climate. Um, uh, in Manitoba, commercial uh, and uh, industrial, in commerce and industry, transport energy use uh, has been dominated by carbon burning light and heavy diesel trucks, uh, diesel rail, and aircraft fuels. Of course, uh, since uh, the uh, big increases that occurred in the 1970s. Uh, initially, the big jump was uh, around 1970 uh, with, after the formation of OPEC and a number of other international events. And uh, so you have had, what we've had is uh, a big spike in the price of energy uh, driven by uh, some of these events and by uh, limitations on supply, basically, of uh, uh, abundant uh, uh, fossil fuel internationally. And uh, uh, to sustain those kind of higher energy prices, Manitoba, and uh, as, to some de as to a great degree, most of the rest of Canada, because we have Alberta, we have been sort of insulated for a time. We didn't even experience um, many of those price increases. In fact, the price pretty well fell but started falling back down some six or seven years later before we uh, sort of converged back with the um, prices that uh, were being paid uh, in the U.S. or in other uh, economies. And of course in Europe, of course, some of the response was to uh, well, and it always had been to have higher consumption taxes and so on that, that have kept uh, European um, energy prices much, much higher and much, much more uh, conservation uh, um, yeah, inviting. So I think I'm, uh, as I said, I'm going to quickly run out of time, so I'm going to not uh, go off on tangents here. and. Uh, uh, just say, um, um, uh, in Canada, uh, we also have had economic uh, higher, relatively high economic growth compared to other countries because a lot of that has been driven by population growth and we've had rising energy demand in some part in spite of various conservation in initiatives that has been due to the relatively sheltered energy prices we have experienced, uh, but also because we have had a quite a, um, a bit of significant immigration and so on, which has kept our um, uh, population growth uh, pretty well uh, above, popul uh, above the natural population growth rate, which has been 
uh, in the rest of the world. And so, uh, so in fact, uh, by keeping our prices lower, we have uh, sort of been uh, swimming against the, the, the uh, stream. Um, now, so globally and in industrial um, economies, industrialized economies in uh, the developed world, uh, so including Manitoba, um, I, again, uh, we can model energy um, uh, demand in various ways, uh, and uh, I will just did not get into that at this point because I don't want to exceed my uh, time limit, which I might come, have come close to already. So, uh, so even in Canada and likely in Manitoba, we have uh, been on average. Well, I can summarize by looking at that point number eight that uh, is there net energy consumers, net importers of energy over the last 50 years. And related to, to this, my last remark is that speaking on that in average is as I have today is convenient and sometimes unavoidable but can be misleading. Much of our energy is depends directly or indirectly on our energy consumption habits of uh, end, as end use consumers and on choices that we make uh, uh, by which are often and still and I must confess, in my case as well, since I, in spite of uh, having to be with one of the more aware, uh, 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 energy aware people, um, you know, we are more driven by our wants rather than our needs. Uh, in my case, I'm keeping around a car that goes back to around 2005, and it's still in perfect condition, so I say, well, why should love driving this car. I think the next one I'm going to have is going to be a pain in the... Anyway, so thank you very much for your attention. Uh.